Hey there everyone, this is Nico and you're watching Parry This. Today we are talking about another of Arthur's knights in my latest Arthurian legend video. Today's topic is, as you almost certainly already know, Sir Bors de Ganis, a cousin of Sir Lancelot and one of the three Grail Knights. Honestly, one of my favorite knights of the round table, and hopefully by the end of this video, one of yours as well. So let's just dive on in. So the first thing to clear up here is the distinction between the two knights named Bors in Arthurian legend. The first is Bors the Elder. He is the father of Bors the Younger, so pretty straightforward. Bors the Elder is the brother of King Ban of Benwick, Sir Lancelot's father. Sir Bors de Ganis is his son, so this makes Sir Bors de Ganis and Sir Lancelot first cousins. In addition to this, Sir Bors de Ganis' mother is Yvain, the sister of Elaine, which I'm sure means nothing to you, but Elaine is Lancelot's mother. So, Sir Bors de Ganis and Sir Lancelot are first cousins on both their mother's and their father's side, making them as close to being brothers as anyone can be without sharing the same parents. This helps to perhaps explain why Sir Bors de Ganis is such a great knight. In fact, I like to think of him as Lancelot if Lancelot wasn't an adulterous traitor. In any case, early on in Arthur's reign, King Ban of Benwick and his brother Bors are killed by King Claudus when Arthur is late in rendering aid. At this time, Lancelot was whisked away by the Lady of the Lake, who would then raise him. However, Bors de Ganis and his brother Lionel are raised by Claudus's retainers for several years, before eventually rebelling against them and escaping. Then they were both rescued by a Lady of the Lake who brings them to Avalon, where they are raised alongside their cousin, Lancelot. Here they are all trained and taught by the Ladies of the Lake. They all practice the knightly arts of the sword, horse, and the lance, and become excellent men-at-arms. They are also educated in courtly courtesy, chivalry, and the seven liberal arts. Eventually, they would all leave Avalon and go to Camelot, where they would all be knighted by King Arthur and become knights of the Round Table. However, Lancelot is the only one of them that would then be known as Dulac, or of the Lake. The other two would simply be known as Sir Lion and Sir Bors de Ganis, respectively, indicating his home, as he was the rightful heir to his father's lands. One of the first events that Sir Bors would take part in was King Arthur's war against Emperor Lucius of Rome. He was one of the four knights that Arthur sent ahead of his army into France to tell Emperor Lucius to leave the land. These five knights were Bors de Ganis, his brother Lionel, and two of Arthur's greatest knights of the time, Sir Gawain and Sir Bedivere. So it is clear that by this time the two knights had already gained Arthur's attention and made at least somewhat of a name for themselves. These four knights would start what would later be known as the Battle of Burgoyne. The four knights went on horseback to the Emperor's camp where they parlayed with the Emperor and his cheap advisors. When they arrived, only Sir Gawain as the party leader and Sir Bors would enter the tent and speak with the Emperor, while the other three stayed outside. Gawain and Sir Bors delivered Arthur's message to the Emperor, that he should leave the lands of Brittany and Burgoyne as they belonged to the throne of the Britons, which King Arthur had claimed. Lucius responded arrogantly that he would subdue Arthur if he was foolish enough to cross the English Channel. This angered Sir Gawain, who replied that he wished all of Brittany and Burgoyne would fight against him, and they would see who would be subdued. Then, one of the Emperor's knights, Sir Gainus, insulted the Britons, calling them barbarians, and insinuating that Rome would defeat them easily. To this, Sir Gawain responded by drawing his sword and slashing the knight's cheek open. Seeing that their parley had come to an end, Sir Gawain and Sir Bors quickly mounted their horses and, with the other knights, beat a hasty retreat. The Romans pursued, and hearing them, Sir Bors turned his horse on the spot and smote one of them down in a split second with his spear. Then, seeing one of the Roman knights, known as Caliburn, putting Lionel and another knight, Sir Beryl, to the sword, he would then charge them, and he smote Caliburn through his breastplate and killed him. Then Sir Beryl and Sir Bors were surrounded by Roman soldiers, and about to be taken captive, when an angry Sir Gawain charged through their line and had killed seven of them before the rest fled in fear. From this day on, Sir Gawain and Sir Bors would be some of the best friends at Camelot. Sir Bors would continue to play an active role in the rest of this conflict, serving as an officer in King Arthur's heavy cavalry, where he would serve alongside the king, protecting him and dealing a great deal of damage to the Romans. It was during this time that Sir Bors would build relationships with other knights of the Round Table, such as Sir Kay, Sir Marak, and Sir Morhouse. The last event of note in which Sir Bors de Ganis would take place during this conflict was during an attempt on King Arthur's life. One night, several Roman assassins stole into Arthur's camp and killed the two guards outside his tent. They then bound and carried Arthur away. Sir Bors was the first one to spot that the guards were missing from their spot in front of King Arthur's tent, and when he investigated, he saw signs of a struggle. With nothing but his sword, he leapt onto the nearest horse and charged in the direction that he assumed 
assumed whoever had taken the king would be headed in, that being the road towards the Roman camp. He caught up with them quickly and slayed four of the assassins and the remaining ones fled, leaving Arthur behind, yet unharmed. Sir Bors de Ganis then dismounted and helped King Arthur up onto his horse, and escorted him back to camp. It was not long after this that Sir Kay and Sir Gawain would kill the Emperor, and end the war prematurely. The next event of note in which Sir Bors would be seen was the Great Tournament of the Castle Perilous. Dame Lyonesse had announced a great tournament for all the greatest knights in England to compete for the hand of her sister, Lady Lynette. This was all part of Sir Gareth's most famous quest, so if you want to hear more about it, I invite you to check out the video I made about him, which explains it in full. But in short, this tournament was one of the largest and most well attended in all of Arthurian legend. All of Arthur's greatest knights, as well as all of the other great knights of the land would attend and compete. Some of the famous knights, other than those of the Round Table, that would compete would be Sir Tristram, who was not a knight of the Round Table at this time, as well as Sir Lamorak, Sir Palamedes, and the legendary Sir Ironside, also known as the Red Knight of the Red Lands. Sir Ironside was known as one of the most perilous knights in all of the British Isles. He was the one who had almost defeated Sir Gareth, who was one of Arthur's greatest knights. It is said that in this tournament, Sir Bors de Ganis and he would break their spears against Against each other so hard that they were both unhorsed and knocked unconscious. One of the key traits that Sir Bors de Ganis is known for is the fact that he is, by choice, a chaste knight, and that there is no indication anywhere that, like his cousin Lancelot, this was just a ploy that he used to engage in adulterous activities. No, Sir Bors de Ganis had taken a holy vow that he would live his life as a chaste knight, who cared for and protected all innocent people that needed his help. Unfortunately, as often happens in Arthurian legend, Sir Bors was taken in by the use of magic just once. The daughter of King Brandegoris fell in love with Sir Bors after he had rescued her from a giant while questing in Wales. She attempted to seduce him, but he was not swayed from his vows. However, she would obtain a magic ring that allowed her to control his mind while she was wearing it. And with this, she managed to convince him that they were lovers, and forced herself on him. It was once again Sir Gawain that would come to Sir Bors' rescue, after hearing that he was staying at the castle and deciding to visit. Sir Gawain discovered what was happening, and knowing Sir Bors to be a right goodly knight, he discovered the magic ring and destroyed it, immediately freeing Sir Bors from the woman's spell. Then Sir Gawain and Sir Bors would leave together. The result of this one event would lead to the birth of Elian the White, who would later become the Emperor of Constantinople but that's a story for another day. There was also a time where Sir Bors de Ganis was tempted by a tower full of maidens, who insisted that if he did not break his vow and make love to them, they would all cast themselves from the tower to their deaths. This was meant to make him decide between his vow of chastity and his desire to protect the innocent. He was, however, not fooled and refused them. The women all jumped from the tower, but did not die, for it was revealed that they were actually demons sent by Satan to try and tempt him to break his vows. There was then another time where Sir Bors de Ganis had to choose between rescuing a maiden who was being carried off by a rogue knight, and rescuing his own brother, Sir Lionel, who was being whipped with thorns by two rogues. He loved his brother greatly, but he knew that Lionel could take care of himself, so he went to rescue the maiden. He was able to slay the rogue knight and free the maiden, who he then returned to her home. Then Sir Bors attempted to go save his brother. However, he would meet an angry Sir Lionel on the road. Lionel had managed to escape the men that were whipping him, and get his sword, which he then used to slay them. Now, however, he was enraged at Sir Bors for not rescuing him, and attacked him. Sir Bors refused to defend himself except by raising his shield, as he did not want to risk killing his younger brother, whom he loved greatly. While Sir Lionel was attacking Sir Bors, a hermit and one of their fellow knights, Sir Kelogranent, saw what was happening and tried to intervene. However, Sir Lionel would then slay them. Lionel then goes in for the killing blow against Sir Bors, who does nothing to stop him. But at that moment, God strikes Lionel down and immobilizes him with a column of fire, saving Bors and telling him to leave. Sir Bors does, and God releases Lionel and instructs him to leave this quest for vengeance and seek reconciliation. Sir Lionel then goes to King Arthur's court and reports his actions, and King Arthur would send him to a hermitage in France to seek penance. Here Sir Lionel would spend almost the entirety of the rest of his life trying to make up for his villainous actions. At one point, after all of this, Queen Guinevere is accused of poisoning a knight, Sir Gaheris of Carhay, and needs a champion for her trial by combat. As the king, Arthur is not allowed to be her champion, and her usual champion, Sir Lancelot, was not at court, as he had left to try and repent for his sins, and to be away from her so that he would not commit any more. Sir Bors de Ganis reluctantly agreed to be her champion for Sir Lancelot's sake. However, he does not need to go through with it, because right before the joust is set to take place, Sir Lancelot returns and 
fights for the queen as her champion. Sir Boris de Guinness is also one of the three Grail Knights, that being Sir Percival, Sir Galahad, and Sir Boris de Guinness. This is not to say that they were the only knights that would go on the quest for the Holy Grail, just that these three are the only ones that would succeed, and actually be allowed to see the Holy Grail as they were deemed the most pious and righteous knights of the time. Some of the other notable knights that failed in this quest were Sir Gawain, Sir Gaharis, Sir Gareth, Sir Lancelot, and Sir Dinadan. All three of the Grail Knights would ultimately achieve the quest together, and be tested by it in both feats of arms and of the spirit. In the end, after having succeeded, Sir Galahad would experience such joyous rapture that he would request to die, and would ascend into heaven. Sir Percival would be reunited with his father and sister, and after his sister's death, saving a sick queen, Percival would spend the remainder of his life as a holy man protecting the Grail, and continuing the work of Joseph of Arimathea. Sir Bors is the only knight of the three that would survive and return to Camelot to tell their story. Finally, Sir Bors would side with his cousin Lancelot, after Lancelot and Guinevere's affair was revealed to King Arthur. He would staunchly support his cousin in this conflict out of loyalty, even though it meant turning against his many friends at Camelot, namely King Arthur and Sir Gawain, whom had both been great friends and allies to him throughout the years. When Mordred would betray King Arthur and take the throne of Camelot as well as hold Guinevere captive, Sir Bors would accompany Sir Lancelot back to England, where they would fight and kill Mordred's sons, who were continuing the fight despite the fact that King Arthur and Mordred had both died at the Battle of Camelon by this point. These two sons, Melian and Melahan, had taken over after the deaths of Arthur and Mordred, and were nearly as bad as their father. Lancelot and Bors would lead their army against Mordred's son's armies, and in the battle, the elder son, Melian, would kill Sir Lionel, who had returned to help Lancelot. Bors would then kill Melian with one blow, slicing him from shoulder to groin, and thus avenging his brother. Then, Lancelot would kill Melahan and end the conflict. Lancelot would then become a monk and later a priest for the rest of his life, and Sir Bors would receive a calling from God and would go on crusade to the Holy Land, where he would die fighting years later. Sir Bors de Ganis's arms are most often described as either a white field littered with lance points and covered with three red stripes, or as a white cross on a red field. I believe it is most likely that the first arms belonged to him while serving King Arthur and Camelot, and later while serving Lancelot and France, and that the second arms belonged to him while he was in the Holy Land on Crusade. Some modern portrayals of the character include the following. In Adventures of Sir Galahad, a Columbia serial from 1949, Sir Bors is played by Charles King as a comedy relief sidekick for Galahad. In T.H. White's 1958 novel, The Once and Future King, Bors is described as a misogynist and an almost virgin, and generally something of a curmudgeon. In 1975's Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Sir Bors, played by Terry Gilliam, is the first knight of the round table to succumb to the killer rabbit of Kerbinog. Arthur, dismissive of the rabbit, despite Tim the Enchanter's warnings, orders Bors to kill the rabbit to demonstrate that it is of no threat. However, the rabbit leaps through the air and onto Sir Bors, who is quickly decapitated before he can attempt a single blow. And finally, in 2004's King Arthur, British actor Ray Winstone plays a different interpretation of Bors. He is one of Arthur's Roman Sarmatian soldiers and is brash, bold, and violent, in a departure from the saintly earlier figure. So, as per usual, the more modern depictions of this famous character do not do justice to the source material. But in the end, that's all there is to say about this character. Honestly, he is up there for me in my top five favorite knights from Arthurian legend. He is extraordinarily skilled and represented as a contemporary of many of Arthur's greatest knights, such as Gawain, Percival, Tristram, and Galahad. However, unlike Lancelot, he is not a knight who compromises his morals and ignores his sacred vows that he has taken. But what do you think? Do you think Sir Bors is a better character as I have described him, or do you prefer the more modern interpretations? Let me know in the comment section below, but in any case, thanks for watching, and have a nice day, and I'll see you next time.